Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's question and answer. Um, thanks everybody that asked questions last week. The more questions you ask, the more I'm able to answer and one of these weeks I will do another live one, but sometimes it works out better just to have Brad here and help me with the questions. So if you're new here, I'm Natalia Bonner and I love machine quilting. So let's get to some of your questions. All right, first question. Do you always load your quilt so tight? Okay, so this is a question that I get asked all the time. Like probably four or five times a week I get people messaging me and different things like that. So the way that my videos are filmed, I know it appears as though my quilts are like paper tied on my machine. And I've answered this a lot of times before. So bear with me if you've seen this or heard this answer before. But my quilts really aren't as tight as they appear to be. I do most often have my extended base plate on my machine, so they do, you know, the way that it's filmed and with that extended base plate, they do appear to be really tight, but I promise you they're not as tight as they appear to be. So I hope that kind of answers it. You do want to have a little bit of play in your quilt top when, and your whole quilt loaded on the long arm when you push down on it with your hand and mine do. So there is a little bit of play there. Okay, okay next question here. When you get a quilt, when you get a quilt, does the owner tell you how to quilt it? Okay, so this is another really great question and another really common question. And it all depends because everything I do is so custom. I never quilt two quilts exactly the same. Even if they're two quilts made from a kit and they're pieced the same, all of that, I never quilt two quilts exactly the same because none of us are exactly the same. And quite frankly, I get bored and don't want to quilt two quilts exactly the same. So I, um, it all depends as far as, you know, what the customer wants, what I see fit. A lot of times customers will mail me their quilts and say, I love your style, just do your thing. And then I will, you know, bounce ideas off of them just to make sure that we're both, you know, on the same page. Some people come to me with ideas, black and white ideas. This is what they want on their quilt. Quite honestly, I prefer the first that we bounce ideas off of each other because just because you saw the way that somebody else quilted a quilt, you know, it could have been quilted on a domestic machine. It could have been quilted a lot of different ways. And I feel like it's best to discuss with your quilter. And I try to do that with my clients, something that's fitting for me as a quilter to quilt on the quilt and also something that my client will be happy with. So some of everything. <laughs> Okay, how often do you oil your bobbin case? Um, I oil my bobbin case probably every other time that I change my bobbin. I'm pretty sure if I can remember right that when I got my long arm that I was told to change it or to oil my bobbin case um, every time that I change my bobbin. I found great results doing it every other time. So I've had a few people ask me about, okay, so when you do that, how do you make sure you don't get oil on the quilt? So anytime that you oil your bobbin or oil anything on your machine, always make sure that you have like a sample off to the side or the end or something that you can stitch a little bit on that just to make sure that no oil gets on your quilt top. Okay. Uh, how high do you have your quilting frame? Um, okay. So I do have pictures and different things online that I've shared about this because this is a really common question. How high do I have it? So mine, you know, I'm actually going to stand up and show you this. I personally have my machine set a little bit higher than maybe the average or what's recommended, whatever. I have felt, and you know, this could play into the fact that I quilt with just one hand, but I feel like having my machine set up a little bit higher, I feel like not only do I have a little bit more control over my machine, but I feel like I don't have as many like back problems. You know, the more I have to hunch over, the more back problems I have. So if I can stand up a little bit more upright. So I'll stand up. Here's my machine right here move my chair out of the way we'll chop off my head here but you can see so right below my chest level a lot of people call this the belly bar and we'll have their machine set down here but I like it right up high like that so that when I grab my machine handle you can maybe kind of see it's a really comfortable level for me okay come back <laughs> I'm back <laughs> I know the answer to this one do you teach classes I don't <laughs> yeah, do you? <laughs> um, yes, I do teach. I have traveled across most of the United States and Canada teaching machine quilting classes. 
um, my kids are small. We have small kids and I'm working more towards just, I will still travel and teach a bit, but I am working more towards teaching mostly classes online because I want to be home with my kids and see them grow up. So um, I do have a couple of interactive online classes that will start in March, Beginner's Guide to Free Motion Quilting and also Visual Guide to Free Motion Quilting Feathers. Both of those classes start in March and they're interactive classes. So I'm actually there every week checking in with you and helping you, answering questions, things like that. I do also share a lot over on Patreon. It's not necessarily a class, but in my Patreon videos, I share, you know, several every month. But I kind of walk you step by step and it could kind of be considered like a class. So. All right. How do you drop the belts from the free motion quilting? Um, okay, so a lot of people also ask me this question. So you can see my machine here. I do all my quilting on a Gamel 22 inch machine. And over here on the other end, I know you can't see it, but I have the computer, I have the Statler stitcher on my machine. So I most often use my Statler for edge to edge type quilting. But um, you can, I think there's kind of this misconception out there that once your quilting machine is computerized, you can't do free motion quilting on there or it's like a hassle to do free motion. It's not. Now I can't speak for all machines, but I can tell you on the Gamel because I do have a lot of experience with those. But there's just two little like screws, but they're they're made to unhook that you just, it's like the twist of a screw. Not even with a screwdriver, it has a little butterfly thing, whatever it's called. I don't know technical words, but um, you just unscrew it, the belts come out and you're ready to start quilting. So easy, the machine glides. Once I've um, detached those belts, the machine glides just like butter, super smooth. So it's very easily done. I would recommend, I'm not your machine dealer, your machine manufacturer, so I would recommend if you are having troubles with that, go to your machine manufacturer or machine dealer and they'll be able to walk you through exactly how to do that. And the last one here, do you wish you had a 12 foot frame? Okay, so um, some of you know my machine is on a 10 foot table and the 10 foot table is actually one of the smaller sizes that Gamel makes. I know there are maybe like eight foot ones out there and then the ones they use in classes, but um, mine is a 10 foot table and it's a long story. Maybe someday I'll share it all here why I started out with a 10 foot table, um, but honestly, I've been really happy with it. There have been a few times that I thought if I had the space for a 12 foot, it would be really nice just to have that extra space. Personally, I don't quilt huge quilts with a 10 foot frame. I can, however, only quilt a quilt that's up to 100 inches wide. So if there's anything larger than that, I can't. You know, if you had a 12 foot table, you could quilt 12 or 14, you could quilt a little bit better. So personally for me, 10 foot has worked out great, but if you have the space, go a bit for a little bit bigger. So thanks everybody for joining. I'll be back next Friday with another Q&A and every Monday with a machine quilting video. See ya.